The EPR paradox. Let's go back to 1927. A famous photograph in Brussels where the golden age of physics. Here we have Max Planck, Madame Curie, Heinrich Lorenz, the grandfather of physics. He was the one who called this particular conference. Albert Einstein, other people you know too, Niels Bohr, Louis de Broglie, Werner Heisenberg, Schrodinger, Wolfgang Pauli, Paul Ehrenfest. These people were collected at this meeting and they went to that meeting because Heinrich Lorenz was troubled. He called the meeting because he was concerned about the interpretation of quantum mechanics. In 1926, a year earlier, at the Como Conference in Italy, Niels Bohr had articulated for the first time the Copenhagen interpretation of quantum mechanics. And in that Copenhagen interpretation, it says complementarity. You have position, but not momentum. You have momentum, but not position. You have spin up, but not spin sideways. In other words, you have to have the two simultaneously. Quantum mechanics describes position, but not momentum, or momentum, but not position. So he believed quantum mechanics was complete and complementary. People who attended this conference believed that he was right. But Heinrich Lorentz was worried about this. And in fact, the comments made at this conference that I found were all in French. So I gave you the French and the, and the English translation for those who would like to read the French. And Heinrich Lorenz said, I could still maintain my deterministic faith regarding the fundamental phenomena not talked about. Could a deeper theory not take the movement of these electrons into account? Could we not keep determinism by considering it a belief? Must we necessarily require indeterminism in principle? And because of this uneasiness, Heinrich Lorenz called this conference with the theme of electrons and photons and wanted the participants to understand or to explain or to discuss the meaning of the wave function. Now, on the first day, Louis de Broglie gave a lecture halfway through the morning, which went over like a lead balloon. He went against the current trend which Niels Bohr had been expounding. And he came up with what was called a pilot wave description of quantum mechanics. And in that pilot wave description, both position and momentum were simultaneously elements of physical reality. Now, after he gave the talk, Wolfgang Pauli criticized him so severely that de Broglie could not, at the time, answer the questions and capitulated. Later on, in the 1950s, David Bohm analyzed what Wolfgang Pauli had said and found him to be wrong, and that de Broglie was right. Anyway, his talk was not well received. Now, Albert Einstein, he went to the conference and he was late in deciding to go. He didn't really know if he wanted to go, and he didn't give a talk, and he didn't say very much until the end. And at the end of the conference, Heinrich Lorenz called a roundtable discussion. And at that roundtable discussion, he first invited Niels Bohr to make some opening remarks. And Niels Bohr spoke again about his ideas of complementarity and directed these primarily to Albert Einstein. And it was only after these remarks that Albert Einstein spoke for the first time. And what he said was, well, you know, I don't know much about this new quantum mechanics. However, it seems to me there are two possibilities. Either the Schrodinger equation does not describe one particle, but a statistical ensemble of particles. That's what I'm talking about. That's my interpretation that I'm working on, I'm using. Or quantum mechanics is a complete description of nature, which is what Niels Bohr wanted. Prophetically, he said, however, I believe the second point will violate relativity. And then he went on and gave his first Gedanken experiment in which he tried to undermine the completeness of quantum mechanics. And that started, in fact, the epistemological debate between Einstein and Bohr. But his final remark was that I believe Monsieur de Bohr has the right ideas. This epistemological debate continued and culminated in this famous paper, the, one of the most famous papers in physics in 1935, can quantum mechanical description of physical reality be considered complete? And in that paper, they made the assumption that every element of physical reality, position momentum, must have a counterpart in a physical theory. 
And since quantum mechanics describes position but not momentum and momentum but not position, they concluded quantum mechanics is incomplete. And the way they did this was a Gedanken experiment where they took two entangled particles, position and momentum, in, entangled in position and momentum, separated them, and because they remained entangled, and he also assumed that locality, that once they'd separated, they're independent of each other, by measuring one, he was able to deduce simultaneously the position and momentum of the distant particle. And in this way, came to the conclusion that quantum mechanics was incomplete. Now, this paper made the New York Times. This paper caused a rift between Einstein and Rosen. It's called EPR, of course. And it flummoxed Neil Bohr. Neil Bohr did not have an answer to this. So he tried in a paper published a few months later with exactly the same time. It's a rambling paper, and in my opinion, does not address, and other people's opinion as well, does not properly address the question. So the EPR paradox is, is quantum mechanics complete? And if it's not, what is the hidden variable theory that lies below quantum mechanics to complete it? Okay, well, quantum mechanics, I said, is a great, is a great subject, and we use it. Now, I don't think it's going to be changed much. It may be tweaked a little bit, but there are problems with quantum mechanics. For example, there's the double slit experiment, which Richard Feynman said after describing it, nobody understands quantum mechanics. Basically, he wants a single particle to interfere with itself, and the wave particle duality, there are problems with it, which we're not going to get into right now. Then there's the emerging quantum technologies, and what I'm going to spend most of my time talking about is the coincidence photon experiments. It seems to show there are non-local effects taking place in nature. So, quantum mechanics fails to describe properly, it's indeterministic, it's non-local, Non-local means that when you separate those particles to space-like separations, they're still entangled. They still com communicate. And how does that non-locality work? Well, some of these emerging quantum technologies, this can't happen. I'm sorry, science fiction people, it cannot happen. Beam me up, Scotty. Quantum teleportation, written a paper, a famous paper written by Bennett, Jules Brassard, who couldn't make it today, he's at the University of Montreal, Claude Crepeau, I don't know if he's here, but um, he's in the big computer science department here, a paper teleporting an unknown quantum state via dual classical and einstein podolsky rosen channels. Well, I know what classical channels are. I can pick up the telephone and call you. They go at the speed of light or less, those communications, those are classical channels. But what are EPR channels? Nobody knows. Nobody has any idea what they are, but they are conjectured to be there. And I'll show you why people conjecture them to be there. Quantum cryptography. I'm not arguing with the clicks. I didn't show you the clicks in my Stern Girl like filter. I should have turned on the sound. And then you hear that every time a particle goes through, hits a photomultiply, it goes click. Click, 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 click. That's all we have, objective data. I'm not arguing with the objective data. I'm arguing about the interpretation of this objective data. And quantum cryptography is a way, and it works, of finding out if you have an eavesdropper when you communicate between Alice and Bob. Here's Alice and Bob. Quantum computing, I certainly think quantum computing is going to work. But, one day, but not the way we think. Not in the superposition of qubits, but I think one's going to have to learn to control local hidden variables in order to get quantum computing. But that's beside the point right now. There are problems with the foundations of quantum mechanics. Now what I want to mention is some aspects of measurement.